This is the Chattanooga Choo Choo train set from my Gen X toy collection. I hear the train a coming, it's rolling round the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison, and time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps rolling on down to San Antonio. My engineering degree doesn't really qualify me to run a train like this, but I thought I'd give it a whirl, and I even put the engineer boots on for good measure. Tyco made not only this Chattanooga Choo Choo set back in the 70s or so, but they also made several others with different paint jobs that were the tender style engine. In other words, instead of a modern diesel engine on the front, or that look, these were the old steam type looking with the coal tender on the back. The motor is actually in the coal tender, and that's where your drive wheels are, and the locomotive is kind of along for the ride. But it has more of a classic look, so I enjoyed this one. This train is sized in the HO ho scale, and no, that is not a measurement of a girl's promiscuity. It is simply the size of it, and it basically means half of an O scale. So an O scale is double this, a G scale is four times this. You can also see by the two tracks, more realistic, this is a DC track or DC train and it gets its DC current from the transformer over there. For those familiar with the Lionel trains, they had three rails, and I never really cared for those because they didn't look realistic. These look like a real train track, but the Lionels had three tracks because they were AC powered, not DC. Now, when I first got this back from Iowa, hooked it up, it really would barely go around the track. So I decided to take it apart, check it out. What I've done is took the tender apart, and I took all the little gears off the motor, cleaned them up well, oiled them, greased them, whatever I had to do, took the axles out, cleaned those, greased them, cleaned the conducting or drive wheels, which are the silver ones, on the one side of the coal tender, as well as the wheels on the locomotive, put it all back together, and it's, it was better, much better actually, but it was still a little bit jerky. And so I figure since this track has been sitting for four decades or so, I took all the track sections and there was just a little bit of corrosion on them, especially some of the old steel ones. The brass looking ones didn't seem as bad, but I took all the track sections apart, went through, scotch brighted them first with acetone, took a sanding block with 2000 grit, dry sanded it, then used a little bit of rubbing compound just to get it as nice and smooth and shiny as I could. And finally rinsed with acetone before putting it all back together. The only other thing I did is the individual connectors on the tracks. Some of them were a little bit loose, so I took a pair of needle nose to those and squeezed them just to give it a little bit more tension. This isn't ideal to be free floating on a floor like this because the vibration can actually vibrate some of the track sections apart. So it's extra important to squeeze them together for this. Ideally, what you'd want to do is have a piece of plywood or something or a table and actually nail all the track sections down so that you can have it nice and firm and sturdy and straight and everything and not worry about vibration loosening up your track sections. You can see now this train is actually on about a quarter throttle and it's happily going around the track, pretty consistent speed with just the engine and the caboose. So this is a good starting point. I've had it going around like this for quite a while. The little bell comes out of the engine, like so. And then you would just take your liquid smoke and put a couple drops in there. Put your bell back in place. And then what you would see is smoke start to come out of the smokestack here as it goes around the track. So again, I have the original container. It is clearly empty after sitting there for that many decades, but that was a feature that these trains also had. The one thing I noticed years ago as a kid was that when I built a bridge, trestle, it had a little bit of trouble going up the tracks because it was losing traction. Part of that was because the their actual traction tires on the tender drive wheels, believe it or not, 
You wouldn't think a train of having tires, but they're just like a little rubber band that you put around the traction wheels and that gives it a grip. So you have silver wheels out there. You have the silver wheels on the outside that are getting conduction from the track, but you also have the drive wheels that are geared from the motor with the rubber tires for traction to keep it going. So now that this whole setup is as primo as I could make it, we'll start building it out, more cars, more track sections, see if it can handle the, uh, the post office going through there, and maybe even build a little bridge or trestle to see if it has any constraints around that. Now for the post office, it's the red wires on the push button that go to the AC of the box. Now with the mail car, what you do is you put all these little parcels down the chute up here. And then as this comes through, these two contacts touch the two contacts on the post office. And then, whoa, he has been taking his steroids. You basically hit the button and it kicks them out. As you can see, the train track has grown quite a bit. I added a straight on each opposite end here from the little circle that it was. I also added one, two, three, four straight sections on each side, which includes the post office and the bridge. And that is all the straight sections that I have. I think the original kit only had two straights, I think. Uh, so this is quite a bit bigger than that. This is something you could put on like a four by eight sheet of plywood. And I did find that I had a bunch of the original curved pieces. I had replaced them with these brass looking ones, but I do have all the original steel ones as well. Biggest trick with these whole things, keeping them running right, seems to be just keeping that track connected, super clean, especially now that the engine's been gone through and everything's happy with that. So with this bigger track, We'll fire it up. This is about quarter throttle. And it seems to be going pretty happy around the track, even though it's bigger. Again, I think where people get in trouble with the bigger tracks is that you end up with bad pieces or corrosion or loose connections. And we can even go full speed. Watch it really go. And if there's any spots where the track may not be level and it's trying to go off the rails, you'll find them at high speed because that's where it can dump off. But this thing seems pretty good going around there. When you add new cars to the track, it's easiest to put them on this particular section because that seems to line them up well. And all the latches, as you can see, they just slide into each other. They displace in there. One thing I'll note too is that some of the cars have a little steering wheel. I suppose that was some kind of a perhaps wheel actuated brake. And so some of the cars do have it like that one, that one, that one, that one. But I don't have one on the pulp wood or the old Dutch. I thought old Dutch was chips now that I think back. Anyway, so there's a couple of those wheels missing that easily to pop out. It's not going the coal tender off track and the Perina. We'll try it once more. If it's not good, we're going to be pulling the post office. I do think part of it is because it's lifted. If it were fastened down, it might give just a little bit more clearance, but I don't really want to fight with it. So I'm going to take that out. Whether it's a toy train or a motorcycle, if you get going too fast around a turn, you can come off the rails. Don't I know? All right, I've added all the cars that I have now. Half speed. It takes a little bit to get going, but it's a lot more weight. And this will quickly identify any points of potential bad contact you have on the track, but it seems to be doing pretty good once it overcomes the static friction. If I turn it up a little bit hotter, 
full throttle, chugging right along. The next thing I want to do is take and build the bridge and see how the train does with a little bit of an incline to it. And I do have all of these little pieces that are for the bridge. If you actually space them out, I'll give it a nice easy grade so it doesn't have to fight uphill too bad. And again, ideally you'd have all this on a piece of plywood and you would fasten these down to the board to keep it all solid. Everything's solid, let's go half throttle and how does it do? It's chugging, come on, little engine that could. And it made it to the top, good deal. And that's with its full weight of cars. And the trick is you want to have enough power to get up the bridge, but you don't want to be flying around the turn. If I had another straight section here and I could put more straights on the down path, I think it would keep it from being less likely to roll it over here. As long as it stays pretty consistent speed though, can even give it a little bit more juice and see what it does. If we want for fun, we could take this little Lego guy, have him about to do the most unsuccessful suicide attempt ever in Lego history. Now the other accessory I have that I'll put off to the side here to make it kind of look like it's feeding off of this is a little handcart station. And this came almost like a model with some various little buildings that I had to put together and paint. It's pretty fragile to be honest, but kind of adds a little bit more to it. It's just something if you're gonna really set it up nice to have, it was a lot of hours taking the tender apart and cleaning everything up and getting it squared away, cleaning all the track, but it's well worth it seeing this 50 year old train be able to scoot right up the bridge with a full line of cars at not even half throttle. And the only real thing I noticed as an issue about this whole kit is just that the post office seems a little bit narrow with the way it's just sitting flat. I think if it were mounted, it'd be better. So it presents a little bit of a struggle for the train to get through that point. But as you saw, it still kicks the little parcels out and works fine. So unlike me in my college years, this train is back on the rails. As with all these toy collections, the Chattanooga Choo Choo from Tyco will be for sale, unless I have a pre-arranged sale. And as soon as the video posts, I'll show an eBay listing in the description below. And let's live for today. When I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head.